Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing my favorite pesto recipe with you guys. I usually make quite a bit of this every single year, and then I freeze it for the winter months, and it is so delicious, pulled out of the freezer, and especially fresh. Um, so today, I'm just gonna be making a pretty small batch uh, compared to what I normally make, because I'm still pretty early in the season, um, I do have some basil that's looking really great, but uh, my plants are still a little bit small, but I just wanted to share this recipe with you guys. And plus we are actually headed out to do some camping this week and I wanted to bring some for my family. So um, yeah, let's get some basil picked and I'll share my recipe with you at the end of the video. Okay, so I'm gonna be picking um, two or three different varieties of basil and just mixing them together to make this pesto. Um, the first basil I'm going to be doing is my Genovese basil, which is my favorite basil for this recipe. Um, I actually prefer all of this in it, but right now, um, since I don't have quite enough to do all of it, I'm going to be mixing it a little bit. So here is the Genovese basil, and I'm just going to top this. And you want to do it right here before the node, and the node is where the two leaves are coming out. I'm gonna put it here. And see these right here will bolt and they'll start flowering and then it's gonna take away from the taste of your basil. So you wanna get it before it does that. I'll just go through here and do all of these. And so when you cut <clears throat> right there before that node, it's gonna take these new leaves and it's gonna bush this plant back out bushier. And it's also gonna, you know, avoid it from bolting and spoiling that flavor. And then I also go through and I'll clip some of these bigger leaves. Guy is really hidden in here. Green stalk's going a little crazy. Okay, and just off this one plant, we got a good amount. I would say that's close to like, um, probably pretty close to two cups. And so we need about double this. <clears throat> okay, and my next basil is called Siam Queen. I might be saying that wrong. I'm gonna be using this one. Um, and I've actually never put this one in my pesto, so we're gonna try it out and this see what happens. Siam Queen. And I'm gonna harvest it the exact same way as I did my last uh, Genovese basil. Probably won't harvest it quite as heavy because it's not as established. It definitely has a different smell too. I mean, basils can definitely take on some quite different characteristics as far as flavor goes and smell. Um, and this one is no exception to that. It definitely has quite a different um, flavor profile, I would say. I don't really know how to explain it either. It almost reminds me of like a, almost like a Thai basil, but not quite as like pungent as a Thai basil. Okay, and then this is my other Genovese basil, which um, isn't doing the best, but it's doing better than it was. I think it had a little bit of deficiency or maybe got overwatered. Basil does not like to be overwatered at all. They're pretty finicky when it comes to that. I've already harvested this one too, um, I think twice now. I prune my basil pretty heavily throughout the season because we use so much of it. Okay, I just went through my garden and harvested 
Um, some of my other plants, I didn't video it because they're kind of in some awkward places to get to, but I have lots of basil. Um, we, I probably have like, I don't know, I might have actually six cups, so I might have enough for um, my recipe to times it by three, because my original recipe only calls for two cups, so the more the better. But it's crazy once you actually get this in the food processor and get it all blended down, how little amount of pesto you have for how much basil you have. So, um, but yeah, this should still make us at least four jars. So I'm pretty excited. Some fresh basil. Okay, now we're gonna head to the kitchen and we are gonna make some pesto. So in here, I actually have already put, I do one cup of oil, one cup of fresh Parmesan cheese, and for my oil, I use this avocado oil. And then I do two thirds cup of walnuts. Um, you can use pine nuts. Pine nuts are really great in it too, but I always just use walnuts because it's what I have on hand. And then I do about a half teaspoon of salt. And then I do about a half teaspoon or maybe a little bit more of pepper. And then six garlic cloves. And I would not probably do more than six garlic cloves because it can get really garlicky tasting and I've done more and the garlic almost like overbears it and I like garlic so that's coming from someone that likes garlic um and then I have all my fresh basil right here Oop. and I'm just getting it washed and this basil is actually pretty clean because a lot of it came out of my green stock And this is gonna be four cups. So one, two, three, I'm gonna mix. Okay, I have a little bit more basil in here. Okay, and our last cup of basil. Um, I'm probably just gonna add all the rest of this. Now I have all my ingredients in here, so I'm gonna just blend it up. And I just go through and scrape the bowl down Usually just one time. All right, let's do a final taste test. Yep, that is perfect. I'll show you guys what it looks like up close. It is so gosh dang delicious. Okay, and now I'm gonna get it scooped into, over here I have um, just little like baby jars or mini mason jars that I put them in. And I just buy these little lids, there's, leak proof and they freeze really well and they just screw right onto these mini mason jars i think they're a lot easier to deal with than the metal ones um yeah so that's kind of how i do it okay i think we actually have a pretty good amount in here um so let's see how many of these we can get filled and now i like i can't remember how many ounces these are they are yeah two ounce jars um and this is a really good size if you're gonna just do like a meal for maybe four people, like four servings, and you wanna do like a pasta meal, this goes so well with pasta. Um, 
And we just, you will usually grill some chicken and put, throw some chicken in there and maybe some cherry tomatoes and you have a really fast dinner. And when you have kids or a lot going on in life or you work full time, this is a really awesome recipe. And after making this pesto, I've been doing this pesto for, uh, I would say about five years now, this exact same recipe. And I cannot buy pesto in the store because it does not taste the same. Uh, the, this flavor is just unparalleled to anything else. It's fresh basil from the garden and definitely try to pick your basil in the mornings. That is gonna be the best time to pick basil or really any herb. Um, that's when they taste the best is in the morning. And then also, if you don't have enough basil for this recipe, you can actually also use like parsley. I've used sage mixed, but you want to mix it with basil. You want to do the majority of it basil, but if you throw in some other herbs, it can taste really good and can get, kind of give you some different flavors, which I actually enjoy sometimes just doing a mixture. Um, and throughout the season, I will. I'll just do smaller batches of it. But my favorite is all basil in my pesto. But it is kind of, it's fun to mix it up. Especially if you have like an abundance of another herb um, and you don't want it to go to waste and you've dried enough or you've preserved enough. This is a great recipe to kind of throw that into. I think I've actually put uh, thyme in mine last year with basil and with sage. And it was actually one of my favorite ways to make um, my pesto. And I didn't measure anything because I don't do a lot of measuring in the kitchen. <laughs> Whenever people ask me for recipes, I'll send them the recipe, but the way I do things are just so much different. <laughs> so I always have this like long paragraph of how I change things and what I did. Uh, yeah, so it's always a little difficult sending people recipes sometimes. And this is so great on crackers um, with some cheese. It's great by itself on crackers. That's how we usually eat it is just dip crackers in this pesto. Um, it's great on sandwiches. But honestly, my favorite way to, to eat this pesto is definitely uh, with some pasta, cherry tomatoes, and chicken. Okay, and so I had about probably about five cups of um, basil, and it looks like it made about five jars. These are probably closer to three ounces, but yeah, it made a good amount. Um, and this right here is probably five different dinners. Really great on charcuterie boards. It's a great dip for all crackers um, and meat. It's good with meat. So here you guys have it some homemade pesto. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. Um, this is my homemade pesto recipe. You will never want to buy pesto again after you make this. And if you have a bunch of pesto or basil in your garden, this is the recipe to go. This is my favorite pesto recipe. I tried several and I kind of made my own twist on it. And this is what I love, my family love. I hope you guys try it out. If you have some extra basil, um, I hope you love it. Once again, you can use different kinds of herbs you can use. You can even put spinach in it, um, but definitely I would make the majority of it basil if you can. So thanks so much for watching this video and we'll catch you guys next time.